Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. And this is a special, special show because I have a special, special guest, Senator Nathaniel Exum. I mean, this is Mr. Prince George's County. He's been in Prince George's County at least 30 years, and he has brought his family through here. Everybody works when you're around Nat. Welcome, Nat Exum, Senator from the state of Maryland. It's a great privilege to have you here, Nat, because you have dedicated your life and part of your family's life to the progress of Prince George's County. I mean, we go way back 20, 30 years, and Nat has always, he was a, a delegate, and then he become a senator. He's on a finance committee down in Annapolis. Nat, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. And this is a privilege for me to have you on the show. And let the Prince Georges see part of the reason Prince George is like it is now, because he has dedicated at least 20 or 30 years, and like I say, part of his family. All right, Nat. Thank you very much, Ed Brown. Uh, I'm delighted to be here, uh, to be a part of this show. I know I've uh, known you for a number of years. As you said, we go way back, and you were one of the ones who were responsible for my being elected office when I first got elected in 1975. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here with you. Uh, on that note, let me just say that I brought with me a brochure Mm -hmm. that has uh, uh, myself along with President Obama on the front of, front of the brochure. Mm -hmm. It talks about, it shows President Obama. In fact, this picture was taken mm -hmm. back in 2006, oh, in the campaign great. of 2006, when no. then U.S. Senator uh, Obama came to Prince George's County to ca campaign for the Senate candidate that year, is that right? Representative Ben Cotton. Uh huh. I had met Obama a little before that event, and I ran into him then at Bush State University, and we took this particular picture. And uh, I didn't know at the time that he would eventually become our <laughs> be president. president. Right. But when he announced, mm -hmm. uh, I remember my meeting with him and having uh, taken this right? picture with him. So I was a very early supporter mm -hmm. of President Obama. Mm -hmm. As you can see, if this uh, brochure was mailed to all to 20,000 households in my legislative district back mm -hmm. in September, and it talks about my involvement with the Obama campaign mm -hmm. as, as to how I had met him and how I met him through a friend of mine who was president of the Illinois Senate by the name of Senator E. Mel Jones. Is that right? And I also knew him through another person by the name of uh, Donnie Trotter, who is now still a state senator in Illinois and who's chairman of the, the Appropriations Committee in the state senate out there. So the two of them had worked together, so I had some connections to the president, and that's why I came on board early to support him. I was elected a delegate to the Democratic National Convention Is that for right? Obama. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And eventually I became an electoral college delegate for mm -hmm. Obama here in the state of Maryland, which allowed me to cast a vote for him in the electoral college. Mm -hmm. I went to Northern Virginia and down in the Petersburg girl of Virginia to campaign for the senator mm -hmm. to make sure that he uh, became president of these United States. And this mm -hmm. brochure also talks about some other involvement mm -hmm. that I had in the General Assembly where I was able to pass a resolution to have the state apologize for slavery. Oh, yes. I, I, I recall that. Yes. <laughs> right. That, right. That's right. right. And that we, in fact, I was the first African-American legislator to have a resolution passed uh, having states apologize for uh, slavery. Mm -hmm. and the first one passed in the nation was in Virginia, but that was done by an uh, a legislator of a different hue than mm. a, 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 a <laughs> color. So, oh, right. so, so uh -huh. I was very proud of well, that. Well, congratulations. You know, okay. that part, I didn't know that, you know. Yes, <laughs> You're bringing right. out a lot of things that I, I really didn't know myself. That's why I wanted you on the program, let the Prince George's see and, and, and be able to see what Prince George's County has developed in you. Well, I really appreciate it. Again, I appreciate being here to to interact with you and to leave some information for the people 
of, of our great county, yeah. and especially well, those in well, 24th well, District. Well, well, tell us about, you, you know, uh, give, I, I just mentioned the years, but just tell us about your political career now in Prince George County. Back there in 75, it was rough. I mean, rough. Yes. And a group of you all got together, and you opened Prince George County up. Yes, that, that's true. In fact, uh, when I came, moved to Prince George's County in 1967, okay. uh, I became involved in my civic associations. I became involved with the Young Democrats of Prince George's County. And eventually in 1970, I ran for the first time for the House of Delegates in, the, right. in Prince George's County. However, uh, that campaign did not prove successful. Mm -hmm. And I came back and ran again in 1974, and that's when I was first elected to the House of Delegates in right. 1974. But before that time, that was a historic decision by the Supreme Court that caused that election to elect additional blacks to the legislature. Right. Because there were only one black in the legislature at that time. Well do I know and, that. <laughs> and his name was Arthur King. Right. But there was a decision handed down by the Supreme Court that said there had to be one man, one vote mm -hmm. process in the election of public officials. And what that done previously to that, all the power in the legislature legislature belonged to the small counties. Mm -hmm. They had more representation than the county of But Prince we had Georgia. more people but less representation. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> We had more people, right. more population, but right. they had more representatives than we did. And so that was a suit filed, and it went all the way to the Supreme Court, and they finally ruled on it and said that there had to be one man, one vote. Not necessarily literally one man, one vote, mm -hmm. but what it means there had to be e equalization among the legislative districts, mm -hmm. and which meant that every legislator had to represent approximately the same amount of people. Mm -hmm. And so when that passed and that went in effect for this 1974 elections and consequently because of that ruling and that law, we were able to elect three blacks to the legislature in 1974, which meant the two of us, uh, I was elected to the House of Delegates along with Delegate Decatur Trotter, who's right. since six, Passed right. and Senator Tommy Broadwater, mm -hmm. you know, representing at that time our that, that was a, that was a dynamic team. Yes, I mean, it was. Uh, yes, it was. It, it was a group that and, and it uh, centered around the Palmer Highway. That's all right. of us, all of us lived in the Palmer Highway area. That's right. It was, it was that time. It was George Palmer Highway. Today, right. it yeah. is Martin Luther King uh, Highway, right. Right. which was later changed in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Right. Just fantastic, and, and like I said earlier, it, it's really a privilege uh, to have you on the show and let people know the dedication that you and your family have made to gorgeous Prince George's. Hey, we're going to start asking you some, what are you doing down there? That's in Annapolis. That's, we're going to start with the hospital. What, what, give us something about the hospital. You're on the finance committee. You're the man that determined help determine the money, right? <laughs> well, it's a, uh, in the legislature, the finance, the Senate Finance Committee used to have that role. Mm -hmm. But oh, when I first, it, huh? yes, they changed, when I first went in the legislature, they changed the Finance Committee from a committee of dealing with the uh, allocations of funds to a policy committee. Mm -hmm. So the Finance Committee in its present day structure is deal mostly with policy mm -hmm. and the budget and taxation committee which was a newer committee when mm -hmm. senator broadwater first went in the legislature right. mm -hmm. and it was assigned allocation of funds to deal with the state budget mm -hmm. and of course senator broadwater was appointed to that budget committee mm -hmm. when he first went there but we deal with policy and one of the things in dealing with policies, we deal with the Prince George's County Hospital in terms hey. of health care. Right. And I, I sit there and, I, and of course, we passed a, a bill several years ago to set up an authority to deal with what happens with the hospital. And you know that process has been in the paper over the years. 